In this video, I want to look at two conditions with different causes, but potentially similar presentations, the claw hand and the hand of benediction. I'll be trying to unpick what they are, why they happen, and how you can tell them apart. First, let's look at the hand of benediction. This condition occurs when the patient is asked to make a fist. The medial digits curl into flexion, but the remaining digits stay extended, leaving the patient looking like they're giving you their blessing. The problem occurs due to nerve damage, but which nerve has been injured? Well, to work this out, you'll need to ask yourself three questions. First, which movements have been affected? In this case, the patient is unable to flex their thumb or their lateral fingers. Next, which muscles control these movements? Flexus digitorum superficialis and profundus allow us to flex the fingers. Remember, both of these muscles will work at the MCP and PIP joint, but only profundus will work at the distal interphalangeal joint. Meanwhile, flexion of the thumb or pollux, please be careful how you say that, is controlled by flexus pollicus longus and brevis. Finally, which nerves control these muscles? Well, the digital flexus and flexor pollicus longus are all in the anterior compartment of the forearm, which is primarily innervated by the median nerve. Flexor pollicus brevis is part of the thena eminent and is also supplied by the median nerve via its recurrent branch. At this point, you can be pretty confident that your Benedictine patient has injured their median nerve. Damage to the nerve will stop those flexors from working, and the patient won't be able to make a fist. Furthermore, if the muscles in the hand and forearm have been affected, the damage to the nerve must be at the elbow or higher. But we still have one last mystery to solve. If the finger flexors in the anterior forearm have lost their innovation, why can the patient still bend their medial two digits? Well, to understand this, we need to look more closely at the innervation of those digital flexors. Most muscles in the anterior forearm are innervated by the median nerve, and flexor digitorum superficialis is no exception. However, flexor digitorum profundus have a split innervation. The lateral half is under median nerve control, but the medial half is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Tendon from this medial half will pass to the two medial digits. So, although median nerve damage will stop most of these muscles from working, this ulnar portion of profundus is still functional, allowing the patient to flex digits 4 and 5. What about this other condition, the claw hand? In a photograph, both conditions look pretty similar. The medial digits are flexed, with the others extended, but there is an important distinction. The hand of benediction occurs when the patient is after major fist, but clawing of the digit occurs with the hand at rest. So what's happening? Well, let's run through those questions again. First, which movements have been affected? Well, let's look more closely at the affected fingers. The fingers aren't just curled up in flexion. The distal and proximal interphalangeal joints are flexed, but the metacarpophalangeal joint is extended. So, which muscles have been affected? The flexion of the interphalangeal joint suggests that the long digital flexors are still functional. Equally, the extension of this proximal joint means that extensor digitorum longus is also working. Instead, the problem lies with some small intrinsic muscles of the hand, known as the lumbricals. The lumbricals are small worm-like muscles that pass between the tendons of the fingers. Anteriorly, they attach to the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus, then head distally and posteriorly to attach to the extensor sheath. This odd course allows the lumbricals to have multiple actions in the finger. So they run anteriorly to the MCP joint and help to flex it. However, they then pass posteriorly to the interphalangeal joint, pulling them into extension. When the lumbricals contract, they help hold our fingers like this. A vital movement for gripping objects, but also for anyone considering a career in puppetry. When the hand is at rest, all of these muscles are relaxed. However, even a relaxed muscle retains a small amount of passive tension, or tone. So the long flexors exert a slight pull on the distal joint, and the extensor will slightly act on the proximal joint. The tone in the lumbricals will basically balance out these forces, 
allowing the fingers to rest in a slightly flexed position. If the lumber tools lose their innovation, these passive forces are no longer balanced. So the MCP joint is pulled into extension, the interphalangeal joints will flex, and the patient is left with clawed fingers. Finally then, what nerve controls these muscles? Well, much like digitorum profundus, the lumbar tools have a split innervation. The lateral two are supplied by the median nerve, but the medial two receive ulnar nerve innervation. So if the patient have clawing of digits four and five, it suggests those medial lumbar tools have lost their innervation, and the damage must have occurred to the ulnar nerve. You may also hear this clawing of the ulnar digit referred to as the ulnar claw. Now there's just one more thing I should mention about the ulnar claw. The level the nerve gets damaged at will affect what symptoms the patient has, and this is pretty standard for any nerve. But weirdly, despite less of the ulnar nerve being injured, damage at the wrist will present with more severe symptoms than damage at the elbow. This is a situation known as the ulnar paradox. So, what's happening? Well, in both cases, the lumbar tools have lost their innovation, allowing digits 4 and 5 to become clawed. Remember, this clawing partly occurs because of the long flexor tendons pulling on the interphalangeal joints. These flexors are mostly supplied by the median nerve, but earlier we saw how that medial half of flexor digitorum profundus is innervated by the ulnar nerve. This is the portion that helps to flex the very end of those fourth and fifth digits, the same fingers that have lost their lumbatal function. Damage at the elbow will stop this section of muscle from working, and so the distal interphalangeal joint won't be pulled into flexion. However, if the ulnar nerve is damaged at the wrist, profundus won't lose its innervation, and both flexors will be pulling on the fingers, leaving the patient with a more severe claw. If you want to remember the paradoxical nature of ulnar nerve injuries, then just remember the phrase, the closer to the paw, the worse the claw. That's how we can distinguish between a claw hand and the hand of benediction. I've summarised some key points in the links below, but if you have any questions, problems or comments, please just get in touch. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.